Hey guys, uh, I'm back with another hash connect slash uh, hash graph, hash graph, hash pack video. Um, annoyingly, so I've actually recorded this video about twice already. First one was just uh, badly recorded. Second one, the audio wasn't working. <clears throat> so I'm recording it now for the third time. Fingers crossed it all comes up. Uh, I ended up posting it and then realizing that, yeah, there's literally no audio on it. So. Hopefully this time's the last time. Unfortunately, it's not going to be as in-depth. I'm not going to be doing it as I go along. I've already got the code there, so I'll just be kind of talking over the, the, the points that I make. But we're going to be um, adjusting for this new version 2 Hash Connect, which has just come out. We're going to be just doing the basic pairing of a wallet. So they've actually changed it quite slightly. Um, it's a lot, lot shorter, a lot quicker. This, um, well, this is pretty much, in essence, this is the whole pairing. <clears throat> um, Whereas in the past, you needed to create your own init data or save data variable. You need to create your own objects with your own kind of parameters. Uh, then you'd have to do about five lines. You'd have to create a, create a topic or do this, that, and, and all of this other stuff. Basically, in this new update, you just do it all in one line. Um, now, yeah, we'll go into everything. Uh, this is pretty much what it would be like. So just doing a React app, NPX React app, and then click Pair Wallet. There's the option to pair with a pairing string. So you just copy and paste that. Equally, it's now, uh, you can also just, your 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 hash pack just pops up. Um, so an another thing new to this update is that previously you had to have an HTTPS server. However, at the moment we're just an HTTP and that pop still works, which is really good. So obviously when I, um, when I sign in and I select my wallet, Something else we're going to add in is that it just displays your wallet which you've signed in with, so the account ID of the wallet you've just signed in with. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let's get uh, let's get into it. So in terms of just the basic setup, uh, first of all, I just created my folder with the directory I'm working, and then I did the npx create dash react dash app, and then I was just doing it within the same folder. Um, then I ran npm install. Um, so you want to install the hash connect. Hash connect npm module. Uh, so you install that with a dash dash save, and I think that's pretty much everything we use. Um, so it's going to be very straightforward. Uh, I've also then created a my code, my function for the pairing inside just a hash connect directory inside the src directory. So it's just our index over here. We're exporting pair hash pack, and in our app, we are importing it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, let's just look at the basic framework. So starting off kind of with the top of the documentation, uh, obviously the documentation is always the best reference. The, the, the setup to initialize the hash connect object is done by this. So we create the hash connect, uh, we, we create a new instance of the hash connect class, and then we initialize it. And after initializing it, hash connect re returns us an object, which is our initialized data. Beforehand, we had to create a variable called save data and manually save the things which get returned. However, um, in this new update, it's totally automatic. One thing to note <clears throat> is that this uh, this this prop this um, constructor passed in to the hash connect class that just that just decides whether you want to go in, in debug mode or not. So true means debug mode, and if you ignore it, if you just do false like I've done then that means you just uh, don't go in debug mode. It works exactly the same both ways. Uh, just one thing, more stuff gets logged into the console so you can see at what point an error is occurring. <clears throat> now, one thing I also do want to mention is when updating, make sure you clear your all of the, all of the local data. Make sure you clear all of your local data. So you can do that by doing uh, local storage or clear. And then you can check that it's clear just by saying console.log local storage. So local storage is part of like the window variable. Um, and as you can see at the moment, we've got storage length of zero. Pretty much if, if, if there's some previous saved data, then it's going to clash with the new hash connect update. So make sure that you've got your local storage clear because also part of this new SDK is that stuff automatically gets saved into your local storage. But um, I'm just going to actually comment out some of this code for the time being. So all of this stuff over here, 
is not important quite yet uh, and we'll go through it step by step but essentially uh, what else don't we need well okay so yeah so I'm just gonna yeah run through what we've got over here so of course we're initializing this uh, hash connect data now I'm just gonna console log it so I'm gonna say console.log init data so that you guys can see what gets given to us in the init data and now if I head over to the console and I click pair wallet as you can see our init data before we've actually paired anything we get our topic we get our encryption key before we got given a private key and a public key now we're doing encryption key so it's just one key and I think this will help with issues that occur um, when you're trying to pair for like a second time uh, I'll, I'll also create a video for that so uh, look out for that one. We've got the pairing string which can be used in hash connect to pair it manually as opposed as an alternative to that click. Um, so yeah you just connect that pairing string and you type that in <clears throat> uh, and then we also get the topic save pairings at the moment our save pairings variable is empty. So obviously once we pair something that will change but for now, I'm not going to do that. Uh, this was just to show you what we get from our init data variable. What we get inside the object. And most importantly, we get this pairing string. So if we're using a, a hash connect use case where there's not going to be a browser in order to pair your wallet, then you're going to need to use the pairing string. And what I've done is I've obviously you need to display it. You need to display it to the user interface. So um, in this function, on this on click function, I've just made a constant called save data. I made it equal to the returned object, <clears throat> and then using this uh, use state, um, then I've created a state. So I've created a pairing string, which initially is an empty string, and then it's got the function to set the pairing string. I've just called it set pairing string. And after this save data has been returned, I am setting the pairing string to save data dot pairing string. Of course, we've got this pairing string property key in there. So that's what then this particular line over here is essentially saying, OK, if pairing string is true at the moment, it's false because it's an empty string. Empty strings evaluate to false. Now, if that's true, and also this essentially this will only display if that's true uh, so it then pops up with pairing string and then it gives us the pairing string which has newly been set to our new pairing string so that's the way that i've uh, set up this this pairing string interface however like in the demonstration the pairing string isn't the method which we actually connected the wallet with so we connected it using this ping now <clears throat> the ping again you can find this uh, uh in the in the information uh, and it needs to be done after using the found event found extension event method um essentially what 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 this does th this method in the hash connect object is once it finds the event data uh which is like unique to the unique to the wallet that you want to use then you can take that wallet metadata and do something with it. And what we're going to do with it is we're going to be doing this hash connect, connect to local wallet, we're going to be taking in the pairing string, taking in the extension metadata, which is returned over here. And we're going to use that to send a ping out and automatically pop up hash pack. Um, so and a use case of this may be, let's say you've got, uh, obviously at the moment it's only Hashpack which works with, with hash, hash Connect, but I'm sure other wallets will, will integrate their own stuff into it soon. But essentially, let's say you've got two wallets and you only want one of them to be allowed. You could make do some checks with this wallet metadata to make sure it's a Hashpack wallet, let's say. And then only if it's this particular wallet, then you can fire, the, fire this uh, pairing Connect to local wallet event. So yeah, I'm just going to head over back to the code. We'll uncomment this particular line. This is the line that handles it all. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll also... Oh, I just do want to say that, yeah, this this Git repository is, is also up. I'm going to put the link below. Um, but this is what is allowing us to send that ping out. So we've got hash extension dot once, And then we say, once we've got the wallet metadata, uh, hash connect dot connect to local wallet using the pairing string. Again, we need to do a knit dot pairing string because we haven't uh, pulled out the pairing string 
uh, by itself, yeah. And then obviously the wallet metadata as well. Uh, I'm also just going to console log to you what the wallet metadata looks like. Of course, like I said, this is unique to Hashpack and unique to whichever wallet you're using. So if we now head over back here, two things should happen. Two new things should happen. We should have... So I'm just going to... I bear with me while I sort out this console. Okay, so I just closed it and opened it again. Um, so yeah, two new things should happen. So we should get a new something being logged in the console. And then we should also get our our wallet popping up once we want to pair. Um, so yeah, let's go. So pair wallet, up will pop our wallet. And here is the wallet metadata, which is used. So it's just description, HBAR wallet, the name, hash pack, and the icon of it. Really as simple as that. Uh, but the most, most important part is that our DAP, um, our Hashpack app is popping up. So from there, we can click test one, approve, and that will connect us. Um, okay, so let's go on to the next one. So I'm just going to delete that connection. So the next thing that I want to talk about is this pairing event. Um, which happens, this, this this essentially fires as soon as a pairing is accepted. Now, this is, for me personally, the most the most useful, um, the most useful kind of event which comes from this hash connect object, because this is what happens once we know that there's been a pairing, a successful pairing, and then that's when we want to do something of it. So again, I pretty much just copy and pasted it, but obviously I've got it written down. Um, now, before we do anything, yeah, this is slightly circular. I'll go into that bit later on. But uh, essentially, yeah, so I'm just going to show you how this kind of thing works. So we just got hashconnect.pairing event at once. We then get the pairing data. Um, and then I'm going to show, so wallet paired will, 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 will print out to the screen. And also the pairing data will print out to the screen as well. So let's save this and run it in our React app. Stupid thing's done it again. I don't know what is going on with my computer. If anybody knows why this happens, please drop it in the comments because it's been happening a few times recently. Okay, so I'm just gonna pair the wallet. Our wallet metadata gets printed out. Our local host pops up. I'm gonna click that, I'm gonna approve it. And hmm, hasn't worked. And I think I know why. I think it's because of our save data so if i console log it so now we do have some information i think this is what's clashing with it so i'm going to delete it using local storage clear i'm going to restart it all and i believe that this is the issue um as to why as to why nothing ever went inside this pairing event so if i click pair wallet that will pop it test one approve there we go so yeah this shows that it's been this just gets logged automatically you don't really have any choice around it but then we've got our wallet data wallet paired that's occurred uh, and then this is our 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 uh, pairing data so i've got the account ids which we've used the id the metadata of the wallet the network i, I didn't mention over here uh, in this init variable we need to pass in this app metadata this testnet or mainnet and I can't quite remember what that third one is, I'm not gonna lie, but I've, I've only ever used false. Um, but yeah, so we've got that and then we've got like another pairing data property within it with pretty much the same information. Oh, uh, look, my console's just frozen again. Anyone know? Ugh, this is really annoying. But okay, so we've done now kind of the two main parts. Um, this hash connect acknowledge message event this is something that typically happens, like I've noticed this gets called when you're pairing a second wallet. That's when this usually gets called. And then the connection state has changed. That's what happens when there's like a, a disconnection of the wallet. So you may find, uh, I don't know, perhaps if you disconnect a wallet, send an alert saying your wallet has been disconnected. Um, but we're just gonna go over these first two events because these are the ones which I find to be most useful. Um, but you may be asking, okay, what, what would be something that I could do once it's been paired? And I've personally, in, in, my, in my own experience, I've done, um, I've done essentially like a select tag 
uh, with all the different options. And essentially every time a new wallet has been paired, you just append an option to this select tag with the name, with the ID of that wallet. And then you can toggle between which wallet you want. So for example, you might pair three wallets, but you might want to say, I want to choose this wallet here. So you've obviously got a select tag, which you can then choose which one you want. And that will, you can do some other, other code beside that to actually make it allow it so that the user can select which wallet they want to do. Um, but for this particular instance, we're just going to do like, like I did at the beginning of the video, just console log, sorry, not console log, just uh, display the, um, the the current account ID. So we're going to do that in a slightly different way to how we did the pairing string. Obviously with the pairing string, we did a uh, using, using state, um, but obviously because we're only returning this init data, we can't really return anything else. You say it's not going to quite work. So I've actually done, I've just created a P tag with an ID of account ID. And then in our hash connect pairing event, I've just added this code. So I've got the account ID from document dot get element by ID. And then I'm saying the inner HTML is equal to the pairing data dot accounts. And then the zeroth one, because when we look into the pairing data, um, you remember that there was like an accounts key with an array of all of the different accounts. So let's just pair wallet. Uh, console log that first. Get on console test approve wallet metadata paired. Uh, I don't think I saved it, but I'll show you the accounts ID thing. So yeah, accounts ID, and then it's like the zeroth index of that, and I didn't save it, so that's why that's not working. Um, so let's refresh the page. Hopefully, my yeah. Great, great, it's happened again. Okay, so pair wallet, test one, approve, and there we go. We've got this account here, 34008195, and that's been the HTML of this element has now been changed, and we're actually passing in the current account ID. Um, so that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I will be making a video on connecting a second time. Like I said, I think it should be a lot more streamlined with this just singular encryption key as opposed to having the public key and private key. Uh, and then I also want to do a video on this authenticate stuff. So as you can see, to be honest, when I first looked at it, it does seem quite confusing. You need to be sending stuff from a server to, uh, to the client, to the server for authentication. Then you want to send something back to the client. So there's quite a lot to do, but uh, to be honest, it's not all that bad. Um, so yeah, I'll also be creating a video on that as well. But yeah, that's it for today's video. Hope you learned something. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be keeping going with these hashtag videos. GitHub repo is going to be in the link. And yeah, let me know any feedback, anything like that. Uh, like I said, I do, I do intend to continue pumping out these videos because I'm feeling very positive about Hedera Hashgraph.